Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the last session of our Beauty and Self Care Summit. I am so excited about tonight, but I'm also sad, you know, because you guys, I told you this morning, I'm going to miss doing this every single day. This has been just session really an amazing and self-care summit. Um, so tonight we have, you guys, this is honestly one of my best friends in the entire world. And, you know, I want y'all to know that I brought her here because she has so much to offer you guys, not just because she's my, one of my best friends, but you know, what do you do when one of your best friends has got all the goods, you know? So she's a fellow makeup artist. Her name is Dorothy Strohall. And let me tell you a little bit, a little bit, a few bullet points about her. She's been a celebrity makeup artist for over 15 years. She's the founder and president of a nonprofit organization. It's called Beauty Will Rise. And they fight human trafficking. They also educate. And it's just an amazing uh, organization. So click on the link. I think it's in there in the group. Um, she's, she was chosen gosh, I can't remember how many years ago it was, but she was chosen to appear on Worst Cooks in America due to her now famous vanilla chicken recipe. And she's a motivational speaker who loves empowering ladies to be their own kind of beautiful. So ladies, everyone who's here, please welcome one of my very best friends in the whole entire world, Miss Dorothy Strohall. Hi, Dorothy. Hey, my friends. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? My famous vanilla fried chicken. Are you kidding me? Seriously? <laughs> That's how you're going to frame that? Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I could not introduce you without mention of it. You know, come on now. There's a, there's a difference between infamous and famous. Can we just clarify that? I'm pretty sure I fall in the other realm of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Roll with it, girlfriend. Roll with it. Yeah, I, do. I do. You know what? Thank you for letting me uh, be a part of this. It's been so much fun. And, and I, you're one of my closest friends. And I just love getting to be a part of you bringing so much fun and so much um, hope and so much joy to women across the nation. This has just been a wild ride, but an awesome ride. It's been good. Yeah. Well, thank you for agreeing. Um, you know, my vision for this, you know, I talked to you before we even, before I even launched this, but my vision for this was, you know, knowing that there's women all across the country. And oh, by the way, if you're watching this now, please click that um, share button and then the start a watch party button because this one, this message is about keeping the faith. Okay, so right now we're in a place where we're uncertain. These are uncertain times. And you know what? We've got to keep the faith for many, many, many things. We've got to keep the faith that this is all going to be okay. And on the other side, there's a good thing on the horizon for us. And so, you know, that's what the title of this message is, is keeping the faith. And that was part of my vision for this entire summit was pouring into women, pouring into their hearts, giving them encouragement, helping them to, um, to find something to do positive with their time, you know, at home while the kids are at home driving them nuts and making them pull their hair <laughs> out, you know? Yeah. So, um, anyways, Dorothy, I know you. I know lots about you, but a lot of our attendees Shh, probably don't. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. You can't tell them the lots part. <laughs> Well, I want you to tell them what you want them to know about you and why you're passionate about the things that you do. You know what? Um, I love, love being with women. I love um, having the ability to just connect with women, whether it be through makeup, which everybody knows I love makeup. The big thing is I'm, I'm under your makeup expert, been doing that for 20 years. And so I love getting to, to connect with women in so many different levels. And I love that you're talking about faith because the first thing we have to do is really define faith 
um, I thought about that earlier today and I'm like, okay, but what is faith? I mean, like, let's, I mean, there's, that's kind of a broad thing. You know, some people would say faith is what you believe in, like your religion, like in God or whatnot. Other things, other people would say, okay, well, you have to have faith in something. Well, what does that even mean? So me being the person that I am, I went and looked it up in the dictionary. I mean, what does Webster say it is? And so um, I went and looked it up and it, you know, the overall definition is kind of broad actually. You know, it says it's the confidence or the trust that you put in a person or a thing. And I was like, okay, well, that's broad. But then if you kept reading, it broke it down into two areas, which really helped me out. So one area really literally said either belief in God or a doctrine. <laughs> and then the last word said, or anything. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to put belief in God along with anything? Uh, okay. But I think what they meant was like standards or ethics or code, you know, because they're not going to, you know, we all have our, our doctrines and our ethics and what we say. So they talk about religion and all that jazz. And then, you know, the next one was believing in something um, not based on proof of it which I found interesting. So uh, I think what this COVID-19 thing did, I think is, is it shook the foundation of what we believe in. And a lot Absolutely. of us, yeah, a lot of us haven't even thought about what we believe in. Like we don't think about it. We just kind of go about life doing life as we do. And we don't know what have we set our foundation on? What does that look like? And, and how does that pan out until you shake it all up? And then you find out, okay, maybe what I believe in is um, a little unstable. You know, a lot of us find um, our faith and our belief system and how, you know, what we trust is our jobs. Or maybe it's the government. I don't know many people that that's their beliefs, but it might be, you know. Um, you know, another thing that people believe in is, um, or that they really trust and get by with is how they look. And if COVID-19 done anything, it's shaken that down to the bare essentials. I mean, this is the first time I've had makeup on in like a month. So <laughs> all I needed was an excuse though. Just, just one excuse, just, just <laughs> an excuse to paint it. But you know, what it really made us do was slow down and go, okay, my job's not there. Uh, what do I, what is it that holds my foundation? What is it that is going to make me trust? What do I trust in? I mean, you're not having a job right now is really, really tough. Um, changing your family dynamic to where everyone is at home. That's tough, girl. That's going to shake some things up. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you where the cracks are in your relationships where the strengths are in your foundation and in your relationships and where your trust and your confidence really lies, whether that be in God, whether that be in people, whether that be in your ability to um, bring money in, whether that be in your ability to um, do whatever you would normally do, you know, where does that lie? So my question is, is where does your faith lie? What, what is it that you trust in and where does, you know, it, are you finding through this COVID-19 that there might be some cracks or some weaknesses in um, what you believe in? Because a lot of times we can build that on family. We can build that in jobs and we can build that in, um, you know, faith-based areas. I mean, what happens to faith-based people who can't go to church, but they've built everything on being at church, serving in church and doing church. What does that look like? How do you, how do you readjust that? How do you readjust that faith? Is there anything that's shaken um, and just kind of thrown things up in the air for you through this, Cindy? Oh, goodness. Everything has been shaken and, and changed. I mean, everything about my life has been changed. Um, fortunately, I have been a very web-based person not not my not all of my career because i'm a service provider you know with the the makeup and the lashes and the microblading and the whatever else i do it's you know that you can't do over the internet but my life has 
previously um, been very much intertwined with the internet, but even still, um, with this whole staying home, yeah, it's changed everything. Even the things I used to know as familiar on the internet, I've changed, you know? It's like, yeah. uh, okay, people are different. People are different and I interact with people and they're even different. So I've got to learn how to interact with people differently. Yeah, so, we're yeah. definitely having to learn how to do life differently and adjust to this new different. And I'll say this, um, because my faith is Christ-based and I am a Christian. And so um, I've had my faith grounded in my looks before when I was younger and I had that shaken up and had to readjust things. I had my faith grounded in my career um, and that's been shaken up and had to adjust things. I've even had my faith, um, you know, planted on my family and, you know, that was shaken and brought down to the foundation. And so what I have found out is that questioning your faith and questioning your foundation of what you've got things built on isn't bad. That's what strengthens your faith and changes your faith to build on a foundation that's stable. And for me, I'm not saying this is everyone, but what I'm saying is for me, my foundation is Christ because that's the only thing that's infallible and stable. <laughs> like I, I have tried everything else. And for me, that has been the only thing that has proven to stay stable when the family was falling apart, when the business was falling apart, when um, <clears throat> these wrinkles showed up and showed my age and <laughs> all that fun jazz. Or, um, you know, when COVID-19 came in and changed everything we knew, economically and socially and relationally, you know, it, it tests your faith and it either shows the strength of your faith or it shows the weaknesses that you might need to readjust. So that's one of the things I've learned about this and especially with COVID-19, you know, and, and where we're at now, um, you really just got to look at and reevaluate what is cracked in the relationships in my family that, you know, I'm stuck here in the house and I have this faith base. Is it working? And if it's not, where's it weak? And what do I need to adjust? And what do I need to change? And, you know, build your faith on something that is trustworthy. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, the whole definition of faith is confidence and trust. How can you have confidence in something that changes or trust in something that can be shaken or broken through a little virus, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, that's one of the definitions of faith that I thought was really interesting. You know, you've got the, the foundational definition of faith, and then you have a mindset kind of definition of faith which is really interesting because um, we can speak of faith as my faith is in God, or we can speak in faith as, you know what, Cindy, when you told me about this conference, I had faith you could pull it off, make it a success and meet the needs of women nationally. Girl, I had faith in you. I didn't even think twice about it. I was like, let me in. How can I help? What do you want me to do? So, We've just got to kind of really look at what does faith look like? Um, and so I, I got a great example that I want to okay. share with you, but, but you're going to have to help me out here. Okay. Okay. So here it is. What is this? Um, that's an apple. Yup, It's an apple. The fact is it's an apple, but what if I asked someone else what it was, what might they say? It's a fruit. Okay, you're right. It's a fruit. What else could it be? What else is it? Um, it's a round item. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. you're right. The fact of the matter is this is an apple. But what Faith says is this is an orchard. What? It's an <gasps> orchard. Because, because, what is because what is locked up inside of this has the ability to produce more than what you just see. So you've got to look at facts versus 
potential and what faith says potential is. So, you know, faith looks beyond the facts, you know, faith looks beyond the facts of COVID-19 and it says what the potential beyond and while we're in it can be. So when you open this up, there's elements in it that you can't see right now, but it has the potential to produce so, so, so much and more of this. It takes a little bit of work, but you've gotta be able to know where the potential lies. And that's where faith comes in. When you have faith in someone or you have faith in something in your life or in other people's life, you can see what they can produce. You can see what's locked up inside of them and you simply have to pull it out or bring it out of yourself and start to work it and cultivate it and then make it into something that grows and multiplies. So that's really, really, really a powerful thing, demonstration that you've just made. Uh, um, what's it called? A demonstration. Because my mindset right now is we got this situation. We got this coronavirus situation. But the potential for what's in the future after this lies within what we do with it now. That's what I see. And um, that's ex an, a, a, a perfect demonstration of what I've been thinking all along. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone else out there has some kind of, some kind of insight or some kind of reaction or some kind of revelation, please, please type it in the, in the comments because, yeah, Dorothy, yeah. that's good. That's yeah, so good. The, one thing, the one thing we've got to remember is when we, when we say we got to keep the faith, First thing is we have to check our foundation, especially if it's been rocked to the core and see where we strengthen it. And the second thing is we have to keep our focus on the potential, not just the facts. Because the fact is it's an apple, but the potential is it's an orchard. So you gotta see the potential in the good that can come from this quarantine and like building uh, relationships with your family and strengthening the relationships with your family, the time that you have. I mean, where else are you gonna get time like this um, from busyness? I mean, our whole culture has been wrapped up in busyness, just busy, busy, busy. Well, you don't have the option of doing that now. So, you know, when you're staying at home, you get to reevaluate priorities. You get to reevaluate your time. You get to reevaluate really what it is that, you know, that is of value to you and really what you need to do for your life and your fa family and the potential. So, you know, here's the thing. You can just eat this as a snack and be satisfied. That's, that's really, you know, what we buy apples for is to consume it. But... If you wanted to, you could pull it apart and you could multiply it and you could do something really amazing with it. Because think about orchards, what do they produce? They produce more than just other apples. They produce wine. They produce different kinds of foods that are put out in different areas. So you can either consume it or you can multiply it. I mean, that's just how, it, it depends on how you view it and how you focus it. Um, so, the thing we've got to do and the thing that we have really become um, focused on is we get so fact focused that we can easily lose sight of the potential, especially the, the potential that's in us, especially the dreams and the visions that we've had enough. We start looking at the facts of what's happening in our culture. We start looking at the facts that happening in our family, the facts that's happening with COVID-19 and we lose the potential or the faith of what is right in front of us. And then what do you do when you eat an apple and you consume it? You throw away the seeds. You throw away the potential of what it could be. And when you simply look at facts, and you don't add faith to it, and you don't add that insight to it, you're throwing away the, the, the potential of what it can be or what it could be. So. Wow. <laughs> I'm just sitting here saying, okay, let's all pause for a moment and digest. 
okay, lack of a better word, and digest what you've just said. Um, oh, I just got a question here. Hold on. Do you have, what, should we hold that question or would you like to, do you have something else you would like to say? Real quick? No, 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 no. Go ahead. Let's have a question and then, you know, I might ask them some questions. <laughs> okay. okay. It says, I think that a lot of women have lost faith in themselves prior to, prior to this COVID-19 because it's been in their jobs or their family or whatever. And now they have the opportunity to have faith back in themselves. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I was thinking that too, as you were talking, I was thinking about, okay, do we have faith in ourselves to be able to bring that, those seeds to fruition or to be able to plant them so that, you know, whatever you run with that, because that's a really good point. Yeah, definitely. You have to be able to know what you have, what potential is there. The big thing is seeing the potential, knowing the potential, and then being willing to do the work. I feel like this quarantine is um, kind of showing us maybe the seeds that we have been letting dry out. Cause you know, before you can plant an, a, an apple tree, you have to dry the seeds out first and maybe they're dry and maybe they're ready to uh, be planted and cultivated to grow into something. The thing is, is you don't get an orchard by just recognizing the fact that the seeds are there. You don't get an orchard by just, um, you know, kind of sticking it in the ground and hoping that it goes. It has to be intentional. So faith without works and without intentionality gets you nowhere. It'll get you rotten seeds and rotten potential that doesn't produce. So the first thing you have to do is, is see the potential, know the potential, and then know what to do with it. And I think right now, um, especially during COVID-19 and the time that we're getting, we're getting to reassess what is in front of us. What do I have? Where's the potential that maybe I just left lying there in my busy state with children and kids and life? What is it that I need to start cultivating? And what is it that I need to start putting my attention to and my time focused to so that um, I can produce something that is trustworthy and stable and is going to, you know, be good for other people. So I, I just, you know, when you asked me about faith, I just had to look at it and go, okay, you know, there's two parts to it. There's, there's the faith of your foundation of what um, this is going to shake and make you have to either realize you need to strengthen or show you the weaknesses in. And then, you know, there's the faith of what is to come and the potential of what you can do during this time for, to move you forward in the directions that, you know, especially business women, we're doing it differently. What does that look like? How are you going to be able to do that? What is, what is the, the thing that you need to do right now that will move you towards that. So let me ask you, this is from me, not from a, a, a viewer. How do you, okay, I, because I know you and I know you are very social and you surround yourself with women, friends, and people that you love to encourage. I mean, that's something that you really enjoy doing. How do you help encourage someone to find those seeds within themselves that they could nurture during this time? It's a good question. Um, you know what, I'll be honest with you. I know that a lot of coaches are very good at pulling out and being able to see the potential in people for me. Um, I believe it is the spirit within me, the Holy Spirit that helps me see um, what God has placed in women to be able to call it out and to be able to nurture it and to be able to celebrate it. Because most women I have found when they have something that they're either talented at or that God's placed in them, they have either been embarrassed about it or um, have hidden it because they feel like maybe it is... Um, shouldn't be on display or shouldn't be shown. Um, you know, it, there's this whole humble modesty thing and, and truly humility is um, acknowledging the other people in your life that have put you in the place where you are. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't be in that place. It doesn't mean you're not in the lights. It doesn't mean you're not 
doing and being the businesswoman that the successful businesswoman that he created you to be it means you didn't get there by yourself and on your own and you really truly can't you have to surround yourself with other people that can cheer you on and encourage you and coach you through it and so for me to see the potential in other women i truly feel like the holy spirit shows me what potential they have just like miss peggy um you know i saw miss peggy's uh whole I saw Medea in her <laughs> the first day I met her. And you know, she's hilarious just in and who she is. Does it need to be coached and refined? Absolutely. We can read, you know, everybody's does. But to, can you see that in her? Can you see um, the goodness that she brings to women as she laughs and tells her stories in a way that makes you want to just like pee on yourself every time you talk to her? <laughs> yes. And so I feel like the Holy Spirit has given um, coaches and people gifts to be able to draw that out. And it really is a mindset. It's a perspective shift. It is um, how you view things. And I feel like if you can start to view um, beyond the right now and beyond what you can personally consume, then you can uh, produce and um, pull things out of people that they wouldn't normally know or see or, or acknowledge were there. Most of them know it's there. Most, of, most people know that they've got it in them. If, I, if we can see it, they can see it because it's, it's oozing out. It's just oozing and needs to, it's saying, I wanna be here. I wanna, it's like the juice of the apple. It's like, I'm here. Let me see, let, let, let me get to work and do something. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Girl, we haven't practiced any of this, okay? So just for everyone to know, I'm really putting Dorothy on the spot here. But what, because I know you have traveled the country, because I know you've worked at a lot of um, larger events and talked to a lot of women and just everything that you do, whether it be a, a multimillionaire celebrity, or just your next door neighbor, you have talked to women of all walks of life, literally. You, you know, even through your beauty will rise, that's a, a whole, whole nother group of women. Um, what do you feel like the biggest potential that women in general don't see within themselves? You know what I'm saying? What's most consistent among the women that you have met in your life, be it a celebrity or otherwise, that women just don't see in themselves and it's a potential that they could nourish and, and bloom better if they just ac accepted that. I think um, society in, a, in general, and you know, over the past few years, this has kind of come to the forefront in society um, how powerful women are. Now, I, I don't necessarily feel like it's been framed <laughs> in the best light or how it should be, but here's what I've learned. Women are powerful and can produce anything, and, and we're meant to. We were made to produce things. We were made to create things. We were made to give birth to things. Let's think about this. You can't have children or society without a woman. You can't. The seed comes from the man, but we have to nurture and incubate and produce and give it life. And so we are life givers. And every single woman is a life giver. Every woman has the potential and the ability to give life, give life in their words, give life in their um, kind interactions with people, give life in a look, give life in a smile, give life to their children, not just physically, but emotionally, give life spiritually. We are life producers. And every woman has the ability and the potential to do that. Um, we just have to get ourselves into a healthy enough place and a good enough spot to be able and to be willing to do that. Um, a woman that is not necessarily physically healthy can't, can't hold a pregnancy. You know, she's going to have issues with it. She's going to have problems producing. But if you're healthy and you're whole and everything is functioning in the way that it needs to, then you can produce. So 
the thing that I know that every woman has the power that she has that men don't have is the ability to produce life in every portion of her mind, in her spirit, in her body, and in every interaction she has with every person she comes across. Wow. So there it is right there. Um, women need to have faith in themselves because Absolutely. every woman is a life producer. Wow. That's a quote. That's a quote. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So what else have you got for us? Girl, that is all I got, unless you want to start talking makeup and vanilla fried chicken. Um, the only, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm real, the, the one thing I learned on, um, the one thing I learned on Worst Cooks, the one thing I walked away with on Worst Cooks is if you don't have the basics, you're going to mess everything up. And that, that was my issue when I got on Worst Cooks is nobody had taught me the basics of cooking. And so for me, the basics of life the basics of mental health, the basics of emotional health, the basics, basics of spiritual uh, foundational stability are so important. So for me, this is the basics of faith. You know, it's important to know where our faith lies. And so, um, oh, girl, I'm just basic. My daughter says I'm extra. <laughs> but no, you're extra. Me. You know what? I've known you for a very long time. You are extra. But in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> yeah, extra crazy, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I tell people out there like, you crazy. I'm like, well, yes, but now I'm on the good side of crazy and not on the in jail side of crazy. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's think about this. Um, if we were to, to, let's just say, have you run into, let me back up, have you run into anybody, and don't mention any names, obviously, but have you run into anybody or seen online in any of the social media posts that you see, people who are just really, really down, and you want to say something to them? Have you seen that, and what would you say to those people? Because I know, in my heart, I know there's people out there that are going to see this video that are down and just by the title alone, keeping the faith that may attract them. And what would you say to them? You know what I have, um, as a matter of fact, um, one came across my feed today um, and I don't know her, um, but I responded to her. Um, and you know, depression's a thing. It's a real thing, especially when you don't have a way to connect in the way that you need to connect. When, and, and hers was connected to um, a physical uh, imbalance. So, you know, hormones, girls, hormones, it's a thing. <laughs> you know, first thing I ask my girls when, when things are going crazy and it feels all crazy is where you add in your cycle. Or where we, where, I mean, are we hormoning? Because it plays into it. So, you know, the first thing I say is, you know, check that. And then secondly, it's okay. We are mourning a change in our life. Like this has shaken the country. It has changed how we do life. It has changed how we connect with people and especially changed with how you connect with people in your own home. Like there's no break from the people in your own home. I have a friend that has six children and is pregnant with her seventh and she's homeschooling all of them. There ain't no break in that, none. So her life is, you know, different. It's a change. And there's a lot of overwhelming emotions that come with that. Sometimes you just got to lock yourself in the bathroom, take a bath and say, don't call me unless there's blood, you know? <laughs> um, but the, keeping the faith means keeping your focus keeping your focus on your foundation that you trust and knowing that you ain't dead. You didn't die and nobody around you died. So guess what? You still get to keep going. You still get to give life to the people that are beating on your bathroom door saying, mommy, 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 mommy. And say, you know, you get to give a life response to that. You get to give life to um, a situation, you know, in a job. 
you get to bring up and give something new every day. So, but what you give is up to you, you know? And so I understand that depression is hard. I understand that right now life is so hard for so many people. Um, but hard doesn't necessarily mean it's not good. What are you grateful for? What do you have? Do you got toilet paper? <laughs> can we, can we just be grateful for toilet paper? I got toilet paper. I'm good. I, I, I ain't caught with my pants down and nothing to wipe with. You know, even, even if you can find the smallest bit of gratitude that can shift your mind from what I don't have to what I do have and being grateful for the gifts that you've been given in your life. And every one of those children that are beating on your door, that are crying at 3 a.m. to wake you up are gifts. Even though they don't look like it or feel like it, they're gifts. They're gifts to our world and they're gifts to the generation that's coming. They're the ones that's gonna change this world. They're the ones that are gonna be our next politicians, that are gonna be our next, um, our, our next evangelists. They're the ones that are going to be our next moms that raise the next generations. They're going to be the one that changes the, the look of human trafficking. We're not going to do it. We're raising the ones that will. So maybe a perspective change on maybe what you don't have and what you're going through to, well, okay, well, what do I do have and what can I give? Because when you get it off of you and how you're feeling and what you're focused on and what is happening in your life to your family, to someone else or to something else or to giving in some way, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, it's hard to be depressed because you're not thinking about your feelings. You're thinking about what you're going to say and pour into someone else at that time. Girl, you got so many good words. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know this is not faith related, but tell me a little bit, and maybe it is, maybe you, maybe you, whatever. Tell not me, because I'm familiar with it, but tell some of our, our, um, our viewers what, uh, Beauty Will Rise is about, because you just mentioned it again, and someone may be saying, what's that? What's that? So Beauty Will Rise is an organization that I started a few years ago that combats and fights human trafficking. And um, we really are focusing on uh, youth prevention. So we are looking to educate youth about it so that they don't fall prey into it. And so that they are the one that changes the look of human trafficking and the fact that it's happening. Um, we, my generation, your generation, we're just catching up on the fact that it's around. That, you know, what it looks like, how it's happening, where they're coming in and what they're doing. Um, but it's gonna be the next generation through education and prevention that actually stops it from happening because they're gonna be looking out for their friends. They're gonna be understanding what predators use to manipulate children in with. Parents can educate their, their uh, children in and through that. And they're gonna be the ones that say, mm, not on our turf, not on our time. You don't get to step into that because this is my friend and I know what you're up to because most predators manipulate their way in and that's how it happens. And so. Our main goal is to, uh, you know, we do help victims and transition them into a long-term recovery program, but we also educate people, parents, the public, and youth about what it looks like and um, the changes that they can make in their own little area with their friends, their people, their online connections, um, and anyone they come in contact with. Okay, thanks. I mean, it was just one of those things that's like, okay, let me let me let me have Dorothy explain how she's tied into to that topic. Um, so, do you do any any um, any presentations or any talks or anything that are you know about faith? Well. <laughs> Aside from it. This. <laughs> huh? this one counts. This one counts. I know you have a, a blog. So tell us uh, about Okay. I'm like, what are you hinting at? Girl, just say it. Uh, you know what? I do. I have a blog. My website is DorothyStrohall.com. 
and I have a blog on there and it really is about the lessons I've learned through my life experiences and through journeys and lessons that the Lord has taught me. And I'm going to tell you guys, life lessons and faith lessons are not easy. Like, I don't even know that you really can say you have faith unless you've gone through some stuff because you don't really have to have faith or confidence or trust in anything if everything's all hunky-dory fine, right? I mean, nothing's shaken, nothing's messed up, nothing's hard. So how does your faith grow? It's in times like these. It's in the dark seasons. It's in the breaking seasons, like when the seeds have to be broken under the ground. They're under the ground. They're dark. It's moist. It's rotten. It sucks. And, and those are the times where faith starts to grow in us. And so um, my blog really talks about those real hard, dark times that, you know, most people are like, I ain't telling nobody that about that. Well, you know, I'm not your girl for that. I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. So, you know, well, um, I will tell you, go ahead. I was going to say, it takes a lot of faith for you to open up like you do in some of those blog posts. But you know what? My perception because I look at you and I say, oh my gosh, how could she share that? And, but my perception is you have faith that someone out there needs to hear what you're talking about. So yeah. anyways, tying that back to faith. Now, finish, your, finish what you were saying. Well, you know, here's the thing. You know, I've already been made infamous with a vanilla fried chicken. Like, if you don't think God has a sense of humor, just check out the show because I was totally a setup by him, you know? And so if I can kind of expose my biggest weakness on national TV and try not to cuss, I did not cuss, thank you very much, um, on national TV, then I think I can share just life lessons. Because here's the thing, when you're in a really deep, hard, dark place, when you are in a place of building faith, when you're in a place of growing, when hard things are happening, you think you're the only one going through it, or you feel like you're the only one going through it. You feel all alone. It feels like no one else has dealt with this or gone through it. And to just know that you're not alone sometimes is all you need to lift your spirits and say, okay, it's not going to kill me. It may kill part of me, but it's going to be the part that I don't need. It's going to be the part that's going to grow a little new sprout that's going to be greener and prettier and better. But I'm not alone and I'm not the only one that's gone through this. And if they, if they can make it through it, I can make it through it. And maybe I don't have to go through some of what she went through because, you know, she's stubborn in a bonehead. <laughs> maybe I can learn from that and do it a little bit easier than, you know, the hard lesson that she learned. And here's the thing. There are some things that I do on a daily basis that help keep my, um, that help keeps my faith cultivated. So um, again, because my faith is grounded in Christ. And for me, that's the never ending, the stable foundation, because I've tried every other one, you know, talking to him daily, having conversations with him, reading the word. Um, to me, that builds my faith. It, it builds um, and strengthens my foundation to be able to get through it. It brings a peace to me um, in knowing that he hears me and in knowing that I can hear his voice and that I hear what he has to say. Um, another thing that I do almost daily um, is worship. I love me some music and y'all know my daughter's a worship leader and I've got little clips of her. She's my favorite worship leader ever. And I've got little clips of her that I've kind of stolen off the internet during Mercy Gates worship that I just play. And it brings my soul into a connection with the Lord and just brings me peace and keeps me grounded in the confidence and the trust of knowing he's there, he's good, he's working on my behalf. And if I'm in a really hard place, I will get through this too. So I got a question. Well, it's a comment slash question. She said, great question. And this is from Paula. Great question. How do we find the seeds? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. How do we find the seeds? I love it. Um, so let me ask you this, because I know that not everyone on this, um, that's viewing this, has that same relationship 
with Christ or has that same, you know, that, that particular same foundation, how would you, um, how would you advise someone to, to find the faith? You know what I'm saying? How to find the positive, how to, how to look towards tomorrow and know that things are going to be all right. Right. You know, I, I get what you're asking. I get what you're asking, but not everybody is um, a Christian. They don't have the same belief system as I do. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you, for me, it's really hard to stay and to see the light when you're not connected to the light. And for me, he's the light. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to keep your spirits high. There's a lot of positive things that you can uh, shift your mind towards that um, keeps you looking in a positive direction. Um, I think a lot of not focusing on the dark things that are coming out from all around us is, is pivotal and key. Um, but it's a challenge, in my opinion, to um, grasp a firm foundation without it being on something that is infallible and that is firm. And to me, everything physical in this world is fallible and unstable. I mean, our society shows that. So a lot of it has to do with connecting with your insides, finding out who you are, what your belief system is, what your core values are, what is it that you can hold tight to, um, to know that when you grasp onto those things that they are going to hold strong. And again, I, I mean, I understand people have different beliefs and different faiths and I've, I've absolutely um, questioned my faith and my belief system all the way down to the core. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, there's been a few times I've wanted to tap out and I was like, too much, too hard, peace out. Not that I didn't uh, believe in God and not that I didn't have a relationship with him, but I, I had to break down religion and church and people and relationships to really look in myself and say, what are my core beliefs? What are my values? What am I basing those on? Am I basing them on things that are going to change in society and culture? What am I truly basing those on? And for me, I had to base them on the Bible. So I think you have to figure out what are you basing your core values? What are you basing your belief system on? And that you've got to go from there because you can't look at the light. You can't look at anything positive till you know what you believe and who you are in that belief system and, and be, be able to define that. So a lot of self um, reflection and knowing you and, and figuring out who you want to be and who you want to become. Wow, wow. So, okay, with that, um, what would, do you have any last um, parting thoughts as we close out this entire week? And I know you want to just encourage people, or if you don't, I do, <laughs> that it's all, this is all part of, life and that things are going to be different but yeah. it's going to be okay and we need to we need to i guess in my opinion i feel like we need to be okay with the fact that things are changing you know and not and not dwell in the oh my gosh oh my gosh you know type stuff but I guess what I'm saying is, what are your parting words for the, the people who are watching this? Okay. Well, I thank you for letting me have the parting words. I appreciate that. Um, even though I know you're going to wrap it up and, and just put the cherry on top, I'm going to add the whipped cream. How's that sound? We'll work it it sounds perfect. So here's my thing about this. You'll never be the same after COVID-19. Like you can't pretend it didn't happen. You can't pretend it didn't affect your family. You can't pretend it didn't affect your children. You can't pretend it didn't affect your finances or your family dynamic. So my question is, what's your foundation look like? Is it cracked? 
Does it need to be strengthened? How do you need to strengthen it? How do you need to strengthen your family foundation? You can do that. How do you need to strengthen your relationships? You can do that. How do you need to strengthen your core values inside of you? Because those have to be strengthened for you to be able to keep the faith, to know what you believe in, to know where your core values come from. You know, what is locked up inside of you that you need to see and look at and have faith in the fact that you can see, you can't even look at the seeds inside of you or look at what's inside of you till you know what you believe in until you know what you know your core value and your strengths are and there's nothing vain about having strengths that's what god put in us so that we could be able to use them with other people so you know what is locked up inside of you that you can use and that you can have faith in and that you can give to other people because you know you're not going to die after this it's it's going to change the way you view things, the way you interact with people, it's gonna change your family, it's gonna change the dynamic. How are you going to change with it? And you get to decide what that change looks like, how that change goes throughout your family, how that change goes throughout your community. You know, you get to do with it. So I encourage you, yes, look at the facts. The facts are the facts. The facts are the facts but don't necessarily just consume the facts. Go dig a little deeper, cut it open. And sometimes cutting yourself open and looking a little deeper can be painful and messy, but go a little deeper. Look at the core, core values, core beliefs, the core inside of you, and find the seeds that you can use to have the faith to grow them for you, to grow them for your family, to grow them for your community, because you're a producer. You have life locked up inside of you. It's locked up, it's ready, it's there. You just gotta go and dig a little deeper. Love it, perfect. I, I, I have nothing else to add to that. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for, um, for all you've done to help support this summit and to support some of the, the the people who have been panelists and shared just thank you for everything and thank you for everything you brought to us tonight you are loved and appreciated and valued well thank you cindy i really appreciate the opportunity to come on and i wish i could hug and love on all the ladies there and give out kisses because i miss getting to hang out with my girls i miss getting to you know have that community and that fellowship and get to talk to them and pour into them but i'm going to do it online and digitally so just go over like the page and follow at dorothy strohall or your makeup expert whatever we're there and um y'all just remember you have this if you, you have the ability to do what um, other people can't do, that only you can do, and I believe in you, and I know Cindy believes in you, because if she didn't, she wouldn't be having this conference. And so thank you for letting me come and be a part of it, and I truly appreciate it, and I cannot wait for the next one. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Love you bunches. Have a great night and we will see you as soon as possible.